Hey everybody, I'm Ernie Hatmaker. It's been one of those, do you put out a video or do you go and do some work? <laughs> so I hope you enjoy what you see and, and if you do, let me know. And if you don't, keep it to yourself. So something that is uh, definitely different, this greenhouse, which is a, it's a, a somewhat small one, it was sent to us by uh, someone that we don't know <laughs> and uh, Ed has been working on it. We put um, some pavers down for the the flooring and we have burlap underneath. Um, that'll kill the weeds long enough for us to, you know, either put a PVC down or, you know, just put some rock or something to, to keep drainage going. And of course, you know, there'll be cracks, you know, in the pavers, or not in the pavers, hopefully, but um, around the pavers, you know, so that drainage can occur there also. Yeah, if you saw that, that was me swatting at a, <laughs> a fly. Anyway, um, yeah, it's um, kind of like a, a walk-in, and he has steadied it a little bit against the winds. Now, we haven't gotten our uh, greenhouse plastic over it. It came with the... Uh, something with seams that goes around it but he did put t-posts in here on each corner to kind of steady it and you can see from the top the top's kind of flimsy and so he's gonna put a, another rod or something up there the shelves aren't as sturdy you know as i thought even though this was a top rated one i have learned um and oh man we have an explosion of grasshoppers too there's just little grasshoppers everywhere so i've got some uh bush beans um i don't remember if they're crowder peas actually they might be crowders but they're in a, a laundry basket and there's a little grasshopper on them since it's rained you don't see much diatomaceous, uh, diatomaceous earth I don't know what I was going to say, but it was not diatomaceous. You can tell there's been either some kind of little worm or a snail or something. Look at that little zigzag line. But anyway, this is a uh, Clemson Spineless okra I think I think it's Clemson spineless I don't remember now this is the wildflower patch which you can tell that I have not weeded all of it out but I've actually cleared out a lot of the um, weeds around where the flowers seem to have bunched up to try to get them some extra sunlight and it's working because now I have flowers popping out everywhere some of the wildflowers turned out to be dandelion and <laughs> you know how quickly that'll spread but i've got zinnias coming out way down there and it's actually kind of looking nice out here took a while some of the um rooster combs are coming out too the mosquitoes are biting me um the rabbits have eaten <laughs> a lot of the the beans from these uh, two rows here and you can tell where they did not see the difference how empty that side is and that side is is full and then we saw a rabbit run over the other day so maybe that was the rabbit I don't know I don't feel bad if it was. Sorry, y'all. I just don't. <laughs> Look at that. And then this is my uh, last thing of Crowder peas here. And over here, we notice tomatoes. These are can't remember if they're black brandy wine or if they are yellow but these are 
tomatoes and they are coming up they have popped up since the last two rains and I need to weed a little bit around them I'm actually going to or at least my plan is to put a uh, what do you call those things some more um uh, i can't think this morning i barely had a half a cup of coffee um yeah maybe i'll have to get back to you oh i remember i, I was either going to put some mulch or um maybe some burlap or something like that to kind of control the weeds a little better so i won't have to get out here as often This tomato, the soil here hasn't been very good to the two better boys that are out here. And they could have already had something going on with them. I went ahead and got another one, but this time I put it in this. But look, this would have been a, a nice tomato. It's, it's not ready to eat and it might actually survive. I don't know but I'm gonna take these today and might just dig up this plant for this pumpkin Isn't that an interesting flower there are stink bugs around here and we have to literally check every day um, for eggs and we have borers that have made it out here. There's a stink bug down there on this tomato. You see him? He's dodging me. Now these are not going to be as good because I'm going to ripen them in the house. But, I mean, that vine, that, that tomato plant's just, it, it's pretty much gone. Well, no, we were able to recover the ones that hadn't all the way gone into their wilt. And we used uh, neem oil, tea tree oil. Now, you can see that the, uh, the leaves are still kind of twisted. Not nearly as much as they were before. But, yeah, these Cherokee purples had also had wilt. You can see uh, the end of this. I didn't chop these off yet, but the other ones were completely brown and disgusting, and I chopped them off. But yeah, these seem to have recovered pretty well from it. So the mammoth jalapenos, I just added a little bit more dirt around the roots. When it, when it rains, some of that's going to run off. Eventually, it will become a bed. This other pumpkin um, needs something to climb on before it goes to leaning into the dirt. The blackberries are starting to reach out past that fence. And so what we want to do, um, maybe not today, but sometime soon we're going to pull all the ones that are sticking out, wanting to go out to the road, and we're going to attach them to the fence on the other side so our blackberry hedge can start. It's actually doing a really good job on this end, trying to spread, but it's wanting to spread straight out instead of over. You can see the zinnias and um, some black-eyed Susans down there, some Cosmos way back in there, some ants. Those ants just got there. They weren't there yesterday. Um, strawberries. Which, some of that looks like grass. A weed that I somehow let go to seed. Well established weed too. I'm gonna have to to cut that. That's definitely gonna have to be clipped. That must be what those other things that look like that turn into. I added some dirt to the watermelon. Can you see? It's a wiggle baby. It's a wiggle baby. It's actually quite small. Uh, about golf ball size right now. The sunflowers in front of the corn 
are just now beginning to open up they're not very tall um, I don't remember what kind they were those might be mammoths I think the ones on sunflower row are Russian but I mean despite all odds The weed eater got to them once when they were little and I mean just all kinds of stuff. If it could have happened to those sunflowers, it happened to them. <laughs> the temperature dropped down. So anyway, um, the corn silks are appearing. Um, the tassels are out and blowing. I actually cheated yesterday and made sure that the ones on the end also had tassels that fell directly to the ears. So I cheated our corn a little bit, but for it's good, right? For it's good. Now this corn isn't having any trouble whatsoever being fertilized. Um, the beans, I think we planted enough in there even though I think the rabbit has come in a couple times because I don't see as many beans climbing the corn as I did just a week before, at least on that end. Um, the sweet corn end, I can't see anything because there's a ton of, of tall grass in there and uh, ragweed and stuff like that on the outside because I have not weeded in there uh, since we put the mulch down in between the rows and that's fine the weeds are all on the outside I'm a little bit okay with that now when it comes time to harvest this stuff I might you know find my regret there because there is lots more room and there's a lot more places for critters so I haven't seen any corn earworms and I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying I don't, I haven't seen any. Only three of the squash that we planted in here um, have made it and that might have something to do with the, uh, the rabbits and nothing to do with my method. This gray zucchini is one of them that has done really well. Um, it's popped out big and full. We're not even gonna look at the pallets. Not, not that closely anyway, where we have tomatoes and okra growing and a few beans and a row of zinnias. Beautiful, beautiful zinnias. And in between that, there's some Swiss chard I don't know why only one of my charts is up, but anyway, yeah, check that out. There's actually um, I saw it a minute ago. You see if I don't fall through this pallet here. All right. There we are. There are some gray zucchini growing. Look at this squash growing here. This one's here. This uh, gray zucchini is only here because I want to see if um, I can get it to grow. That, that's the only reason it's here, if it'll grow um, on a flat pallet bed and how well it'll do. Now, this sunflower it's a small one it was a Mexican sunflower it has confused me because I don't know why it grew curved see that back it's curved looks like most of the seeds are gone I think the birds have been eating that there's a lot of empty spots it looks like a beehive almost or you know a honeycomb where the cells are empty but it's curved and Ed and I were trying to figure that out this tomato is doing a lot better in here it didn't get wilt it honestly I think got stunted a bit because you know it's in there with sunflowers which I told you I just kind of want to see what we'll get um, this is a uh, giant Marconi pepper he seems to be doing okay have a little bit of bug damage but not a lot it's that white moth right there there's gonna be some little loopers hanging out on this ragweed soon 
All right, now here is a squash that is taking forever to take off. It's just not doing that well at all around the corn. Big difference from the one that's directly over there, but they're two different types. This one's vining a lot more. I don't remember if it's a butternut or a gray zucchini, but it is a different type of squash. I actually see some kind of poo in there. No, that's not poo. That's landscape cloth. Okay. But yeah, you can see the, the big difference in the, the sweet corn. And I'm not saying it's the corn's fault. It's probably mine for not covering more with the uh, mulch. Ed was, you know, telling me that I should have covered some of those gaps up more when we were doing it. But I was tired and got tired of doing it. And you can tell the difference in how much grass is growing up in, in between the trucker's favorite not to mention trucker's favorite is that much taller and they were all planted at the same time i mean it's literally at least a foot difference in some areas than the sweet corn let's get these move these back some now these containers are awesome at weed killing and sometimes i've moved them around to just kill the weeds in a certain area all right, let's move over to these strawberries that um, I have not trained to go out of the the A-frames, which I'm going to do the A-frames a little bit differently this next go around. Look at this. I broke this trying to turn it over. supposed to be edible the way some of the leaves are yellowing um, and it's, it's getting plenty of sunlight plenty of water but it's also probably getting too much stink bug attention because uh, the way that they're planted with two seeds in each square with two seeds in each square it seems like I can't get to them all to um, train them around and out and all that I was going to ask if you can use your long arms to reach in here and grab this squash. You see it? In the long arms. You just don't want to reach in there. I've reached in there before. You didn't this time. See the differences between the two of them? That one's got warts. Yeah. I'm going to have to move those flowers out of the way. Now they're starting to... Awesome, 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 awesome. Look at that. Yes, yes, please. Oh. Oh, yeah. Looks like it got a little bug damage and then bruise. But this is the other bush Goliath. Thank you, Ed. What's going on, dogs? Marigold and spinach, they're doing great in this stacked thing here. The sunflowers. Look over there. The Pakistani mulberry tree. Planted this year, produced mulberries this year. Those two okra are actually they're they're doing fairly well, those okra are next to that squash. I've got corn in here and bean.
So of everything that we planted here, there was basil, peppers, marigolds, and a couple of tomatoes. Out of all of this green that you see, none of them came up in those rows there. If you can see near the, the blue bucket there, from those two rows on, it's supposed to be tomatoes. We've only got two tomatoes coming up in this whole area. And it has nothing to do with the weeds. It's the, the soil is just so hostile. Because um, if you remember, this whole area was a soybean field. And so now there's just a few marigold that have popped up and um, some basil and I, I can't remember where the pepper is I thought I, I made a mark of it the other day maybe I didn't but this is gonna be um, a bed too um, it might be raised I don't know yet this was one of the tomatoes that hornworms had eaten to nothingness and it's returning so are these, and these actually have more red tomatoes to pull off. They're returning, and they were nothing but stems. And because we'd had hornworms, I assumed that we were going to have uh, the baby, what, monarch, I believe, that love deal, and they haven't shown up. So this mammoth deal in this pallet bed has been doing good. So this lettuce that I have not collected seed for went to seed um, and dropped a couple in there and I'm not going to keep any of it. Um, I might keep some of the seed but I'm not going to keep this new one. It's already going to seed. This drought and water. Not doing good. These are I think all yellow pear tomatoes that I started from seed. Some are uh, from the dollar store seed pack and some are Baker Creek and I don't know which is which. They were all started at the same time though. This citronella is blooming and growing some more. The yellow brandy wines. They're getting uh, a fungus on them and it's different than that bacterial wilt they had been attacked by hornworms but not as bad but they are producing a whole bunch of babies Hey Cosmo, you tired of those whippersnappers? Ed, what you doing with the zip ties? Reinforcing this. Yeah. Frame? That's an interesting shirt you're wearing, Ed. Mm. Who is it? Rick from Lala Farm down in Florida. Rick Lala. Rick Lala? I guess it's Lala. I don't know. Lala is his wife's name. The farm is named after her. Silly. While we're over on this end, let's check out this peppermint. I've pinched it a couple times. 
Um, if you remember when I first put it here, the stink bugs all flocked to it. It's going to seed. The geraniums, which have a little bit of citronella in them. One made it. One didn't. Then we have the rosemary. We've actually used some of this rosemary in our uh, uh, food seasoning. We used uh, some dill rosemary and uh, uh, what was the other? Uh, cilantro. Let's look at this gray zucchini. We have two of them growing or popping out. I removed one bucket. Um, I can show you that later. I need to remove a, a bind weed that's growing over there. This was the squash I was telling you that the uh, stink bugs got hold of. This was a yellow squash and um, they really did get hold of it and so did um, a vine borer although I stabbed it and I'm not sure if I was successful or not. Back to the brandy wine. Yeah, I know <laughs> several frames later back to the brandy wine. Uh, look at that. This lettuce is hit or miss. The sun just does bad stuff to it. So, you want to see the belly acre bale? What in the world is that? Look at that. It's like extra bell pepper. It's like it was a twin. But this is the belly acre yellow bells. Yeah, there's a bunch of them in here too. Look, it's a, a deal demon. I'm not too interested in, in swallowtails. Not a whole lot they can do to me this late in the year, I don't think. He seems interested in eating zinnias anyway. Or, you know, pollinating zinnia. So, I, I have been hardening off this pepper... Um, and this is its third full day outside and it's still in the full sun um, doesn't seem to to like it too much these are black Russian cream tomatoes uh, I grew them in containers on the porch when we lived in Tennessee and they did not produce anything until about September and I, I planted them I think in June that year so I mean we'll see kale coming out little Mexican sunflowers it's actually pretty that red shows up really well underneath this camera here but it actually looks quite faded These were some kind of uh, beef steak. I can't remember what kind they were. The celery now on its last legs has just started thickening up. And look, it's not very short at all. I mean, tall at all. Toss. I'm going a little bit willy-nilly and not really going in order, but... You're seeing everything. This Swiss chard here actually looks good enough to, to pull out before the grasshoppers start eating it all. It was one of the first things that was planted too. And then we can just let this um, peppermint take over. Well, actually, I can't remember if this is, yeah, this is uh, sweet mint or peppermint. I can't remember now. I bet I have a label in there somewhere. More Swiss chard. There's time. 
this cilantro um, is going to seed and I'm going to be getting lots of seeds from it. It's not really ready yet. They're not uh, brown enough. Look at that. There's a grasshopper. Is he alive? Actually, no, it looks like a uh, an exoskeleton. There's a grasshopper exoskeleton. I didn't know they did that. Yeah, they molt. And what's this poking out of the sage? It's actually peas that are planted over there that's poking out of the sage. <laughs> Some snails down there. I think this is the lemon mint. And you can tell by how brown it is in certain areas where it, that uh looks like a bee is in there too. And then the catnip, which we took some and dried it. But I'm going to take some more of these flowers real soon and um, dehydrate them so we can have some catnip flower tea. Ed, you're going to be first to try the catnip flower tea. You remember that show Max Headroom? That, 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 Max, Max Headroom? <laughs> now that we've been chopping off stink bug eggs where we can find them, um, the nasturtiums are doing way better next to this these two things here. We still have a squash vine borer problem. This is another better bush here. Yeah, it's two of them actually, but yeah, they do look good. I'm really surprised. I really hope I got the vine borer because I did get two or three vine borers. That's why I started a fire yesterday. I believe I said earlier how these Cherokee purples um, over here have all bounced back from that bacterial infection since I tried the neem treatment and I think I used neem oil, uh, dish detergent, orange oil, and there might have been some peppermint oil in it right now. I don't remember. Can't use it in full sun. Um, hey look, more of these seeds are, are becoming where I can harvest them. I have not eaten any of these mustard uh, greens. I actually did dehydrate some, but I haven't eaten any since they went to seed because honestly they taste kind of bitter. But I've been trying to get enough seed to where number one, I can replant them. But number two, I can make mustard. Do what? It looks as though some of our ruby Swiss chard has found critters that want it. Maybe they'll leave our squash alone. This is another better boy. It's got a few bites um, on some of the leaves, but it, it's not doing well. For whatever reason, um, even though they're hybrids and they're supposed to be able to weather things a lot better, um, better boys always seem to get fungus on them really easy in our southern rains maybe they do better in a greenhouse environment and you can't really tell but the the entire trunk and stem and maybe they're supposed to be this way i don't know because everyone that we've ever had has ended up this way where the stem is kind of rubbery it'll still produce tomatoes and they're still good to eat but and the cabbages the cabbages as big as they are this is actually the largest head right here um and maybe they would have gotten bigger if i'd have only put a few in instead of six <laughs> actually it had seven but one of them was so eaten up with bugs it didn't grow very well so i took it out so the next go around um this this fall uh, when i plant cabbage i'm not going to plant them here just in case we have cabbage looper eggs in this uh, soil here um, I'll plant something different that they won't eat, but um, in another maybe few days I'll go ahead and harvest this because it just seems like I'm, I'm playing a game of get ahead or catch up for 
critters. Now these holes are old. Um, well, this one isn't. I know Grasshopper has been here because I saw it the other day. Um, but yeah, they're, every time it rains, if you don't come out immediately and retreat, that's what happens. They go to nibbling on things that... And I just don't want to use toxic poisons because I don't want to poison myself. These are yellow pear tomatoes also in this hamper and they're actually thinning themselves out. I don't really have to do a lot. The teepees. This soil is pretty hostile and a couple of things are growing on each one. Look at that. There's a brown lace wing down there. You see it? That is a good bug. They eat caterpillars. And aphids these are Arkansas travelers and they want to go everywhere but they're outgrowing their cages now these cucumbers are exploding everywhere. This Boston pickling cucumber is trailing out in three directions. So we're going to get it to put a third stake out here so this cucumber stays up. These are called Big Beef, or this is a Big Beef uh, tomato plant. It's also a little fungusy, but it's getting flowers now, and it's got a couple tomatoes on it. And now we're at the teepees, where we can see stink bugs are no longer even trying to keep the eggs on the bottom of the, the leaves, but they are also putting them on top. So the squash were removed from here because the stink bugs had just gotten on them so bad. And here, a vine borer has gotten on them. You can tell because it's got a rip in the, the trunk and all that weird crusty looking cornmeal stuff. That's actually vine borer poo. That white, gooey stuff, that's the vine borer. And we find ourselves at the trellises, which there's a lot happening with the bees and the squash, and there are a few borers, and you can tell, because there's, you know, the baby poo. It's a little dis disheartening sometimes. The beans are climbing, the nasturtiums are climbing. Our Arkansas travelers are climbing. peppers are finally moving up <laughs> so all in all in spite of a lot of the things we're having to work with and work around these guys are doing great 